Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back again to the Stink booth here at the European Business Summit 2014. Carlo Motta reporting for the European Sting. Um, it's a big honor and pleasure to have uh, to our pavilion Mr. Robert Jan Smith, Director General for the European Commission of Research and Innovation. Welcome and thank you very much for this uh, interview. I would like to start our um, quick interview asking if, in your opinion, is if Europe is you know, innovative enough and if you reckon that there's a gap between innovation I mean in countries like European and other markets such as Asia or the USA well if the question is is Europe innovative I can say oh yes we are very innovative are we innovative enough that is something which is of course a big challenge and a big question um, Europe with its small size of its population is generating one-third of the world's knowledge and that's amazing the other third is generated by the United States and the rest of the world does the other third. So it's quite amazing that such a small continent is able to produce so much know-how. What has been one of the problems which Europe has faced is to transfer that knowledge into marketable products and services. We have not always been very effective and good in doing that. Uh, compared to the United States, for instance, where things go extremely fast and where there is more or less a very quick deployment of the results from research into innovation. So that is for Europe now the big challenge to really turn the results of research into innovation or to put it in another way, we were very good in turning euros into knowledge but now we have to turn the knowledge back into euros. And can the Commission facilitate the intra-EU diffusion of innovation and how? Well, we should indeed keep on working on the real internal market in Europe. That there are no more barriers to cooperation, no more barriers to transfer of knowledge. That between scientists there can be much more cooperation and that scientists can also move much easier from one country to another. That there's a passport for venture capitalists which allow British venture capitalists to be in any market in Europe. So in other words, we have to further develop this internal market which allows that innovation to take place. Because don't forget one of the big challenges or problems that certain companies face who have a technological breakthrough is that they do not have enough size in the market in order to roll out their products. And that is of course one of the biggest assets of the United States. You have this big internal market where you can indeed very quickly deploy and roll out inventions on a large scale. But Europe has done a lot in recent years, in the recent uh, Commission Brussels 2, which is, as you know, coming to an end on the 1st of November. An enormous amount of initiatives have been deployed to create an internal market, but also to work on the funding side. Also, um, still coming back to the Europe-USA comparison, what about the link between university and job in Europe? I, we are all convinced that the US are doing pretty well with this connection. What about the EU, in your opinion? Well, things in Europe has changed a lot of universities. I remember five, six years ago when I went to university, they said, the first thing they told me, oh, we have generated so many papers. We have done so many studies. Now, the first thing they tell me, we've created so many spin-ups and startups. So we see also there that more and more European universities take innovation quite seriously, creates incubators, science parks, are very keen indeed that their students and their professors start their own enterprises. So we see an enormous change in culture in Europe. A good change in culture because of course it is in the interest of our society that the results of research are not staying in a drawer, but they are put into products and processes. And universities play a key role not only in generating the knowledge, but also making sure that the knowledge is transferred into industry. And how can the Commission help the laggard EU countries strengthen their innovative actions? Well, what we do from our side is think first of all, we are of course um, um, telling member states keep on investing in science innovation. If you have to cut budgets for whatever reason, do not cut the budget in science innovation and education. That needs to be strengthened. Take an example of Finland, which in the early 90s when it completely lost the Soviet market and saw a collapse of its GDP, Finland had to cut everywhere and they cut everywhere except the expenditure of science innovation, they increased that. And that was the basis for the Finnish industry, for the Finnish competitiveness, for the pulp and paper industry, for the Nokia of this world. So that is a wise 
decision. So we are constantly reminding our member states of this Finnish example. We are reminding the member states of indeed continue investing in science innovation. You know what is quite interesting? Those countries which over the last 10 years have constantly invested in science innovation are at the same time the countries which are getting quickest out of the economic crisis. So there is a clear link between competitiveness and science and innovation. And that is something on which we keep on reminding the member states. And I must say this message is more and more understood. And the fact that at the European level, in a shrinking future EU budget, because you know the future budget of the European Union is going to get smaller than today, there's one area which will grow, and that is science innovation. And that is, I think, a recognition by the heads of state and government of Europe, Mrs. Merkel, Cameron, of the, the clear link which there is between investment in science innovation and competitiveness. So you're happy of the response you get, you usually get from the member states? Yes, I think we are, the message is getting through. And what we also see very clearly now is that at the highest political level, at the level of the prime ministers, people are getting a keen interest in science innovation. And it's not anymore seen as a cost, but it's seen as an investment. And that's very important. That's a turning point we are reaching, that at national level, the senior politicians are seeing investments in science innovation as real investments and not as a cost. And that is exactly where we want to be, because that means that science and innovation are becoming a very important component of the economic policy of the member states. That's good news. Um, for last question, I would like to ask you quite an open one. And I would really like to know, in your opinion, according to what you feel, how did the economic crisis change the idea of innovation for people? That's a good one. Has the economic crisis changed the idea of innovation? Um, I think the economic crisis has made it clear that Europe cannot lean back and relax. That means that we have to get our act together. And I think people have realized through the economic crisis that through the old traditional sectors, we not, cannot build the future. And that our future is in innovation and knowledge. So I think the crisis, the economic crisis, have led people more than ever to realize that the future jobs of a country, the future competitiveness of a country, has to come from innovation. So perhaps the crisis has led to a wake-up call, not to rely on the traditional way of doing things, not to rely on the traditional sectors, not to rely on how it will come back what we had in the past. No, I think it was a wake-up call which led people to realize that innovation is the only way forward and it's the future for our children. Thank you. And we all hope for a great future. So I I thank you, I warmly thank you, Mr. Robert Jansmeets, Director General for Research of Innovation, European Commission, for being with us. It's been a pleasure and honor, and I wish you a pleasant evening. Thank you very much. Thank you great very time. much. Thank you.